Hey everybody, this is Jason with Lone Star Catfish. Uh, another quick evening trip. Um, don't have a lot of daylight uh, to fish in, but there is an approaching front uh, coming in tomorrow morning. Um, and so continuing my experimentations with pressure, I wanted to get out here back on the main lake, which is where I am, under falling pressure um, to a spot that I've actually caught some big fish before uh, and see what's going on out here. Uh, the water temp is right around 62 degrees. Um, if you see my last couple videos, you know, two videos ago in the kayak, I came out just after a front, and rather than trying the main lake, I tried a creek. Um, and while I didn't get on big fish, I got on good numbers. It was pretty steady, pretty constant fish, um, and so that was a good data point to understand, you know, maybe what the fish are doing under those high pressures. Last weekend, um, an approaching front took the big boat out on the main lake and again found numbers. Um, nothing of size, I think 20 inches was about the biggest fish we caught, um, but steady all day. Um, so here again, back in the kayak, approaching front, falling pressures, main lake, what's gonna happen? Like I said, this is a spot I've caught some big fish in before, um, and so this is sort of a, a, a collision of all the different things that I've done with respect to pre uh, pressure and location and timing. So, so that's why I'm going ahead and coming out here a uh, pretty good headwind I had coming out to this spot. It's about a mile paddle. I had about anywhere from a, a five to eight mile per hour headwind. Um, so that was a little rough, but the good news is if it stays like this, which it's supposed to, I can practically surf my way back to my launch point. Um, fortunately, I can't fish after dark. I'm just not set up for that, either in a kayak or with you know what I would consider safe uh, retrieval uh, locations for the kayak. Um, so I want to get back up there before it gets too dark. Um, from a hook uh, experiment perspective, I've been talking about the octopus circle hooks. Last time on the kayak, um, I was downsizing my hooks. I really think I found the 4 aught and the 3 aught to be my, my sweet spot, at least for the size fish that I was catching. Um, today, I've completely switched everything out to the double aught hooks. And in, in last week's video, I did a side by side of what those look like. You know, the, the octopus circles having a very smooth circle with the point coming back, and the double actions having a little bit more of a, an angle in the bend of the hook. Um, and again, I'm, I'm just, I wanna see what size hooks of the double action end up being the sweet spot. Um, you know, and again, as I've said a couple times in those videos, what I'm looking for is to maybe be able to go to a larger hook but still catch the small fish. That's the balance I'm trying to find. Get to put the biggest hook on that I can that can still catch 15, 16 inch fish, but can land a 30 inch fish uh, when one comes along. So, so that's, um, that's what I'm continuing to do today. Um, so uh, the wind's blowing pretty good. It's actually not bad right now, uh, but there may be a little mic noise, so I apologize for that. Uh, but we're gonna give this a couple hours and see what we can't turn in. Uh, and then we're going to head back out. So again, hopefully I get enough action here to put into a video. Uh, and if I do, I will talk to you in a bit. I think that's hooked up. Let's see if we can't get a look at what he is. Take that. Come here. There we go. And that is a solid hook set right there. All right, so that's one of my, I think that's one of my bigger hooks right there. I believe that's a five odd. I'm gonna have to keep track of this a little bit better. But that's a pretty good fish. Now that's a channel cat, but that's a good channel cat. I'll tell you what, I'd love to catch 15 of these. He's right at 19 inches. So that's a good first fish of the day right there. And again, that was a good hook set. It was actually in the top of his mouth. Um, all right, on the board. Again, good fish. Good fish to start off. Put him back. I've got my three different hook sizes out here. So I've got my three aught double action. There's the four aught double action. And there's the five aught double action. So, some is 
got this. They are not, haven't convinced me yet though. One of the other things I was going to really try to do was be patient on these bites. Um, and when I get stuff like this, I don't have to pick it up. Just let it go. Um, this one has been biting on this for a while, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up on this. It's been moving steadily, so it's had it in its mouth for two or three minutes, so let's go ahead and see what we got. Yeah. And he is barely hooked. He is barely hooked. So, you can see that, but I mean, that is, talk about the hair on his chinny chin chin. That is barely in there. And that's what happened. He just he bit that and then kind of snagged the side of his lip and he couldn't get, couldn't get it loose. That's a solid bite right there. channel but he definitely got that hook set in his mouth. See right there in the corner and bait's kind of in the way we see right there in the corner. This front camera on it too you can see that. So that's good. And again that's that five odd hook so I like it's a good sign you know I like that. That's not a huge fish. You know, he's probably 14, between 14 and 15. And he was able, again, with that small mouth, he was able to get that five on hook in his mouth. So, it seems to be the only hook that uh, they're interested in. So, there's definitely some fish in here. Hopefully, they're going to start biting a little bit more. So, speak of the devil. Speak of the devil. I just dropped that back down there after checking it. And it took off. Now it didn't hook up. You know, and that's one of those body pieces. And those body pieces, I definitely understand now when I watch guys fish and they talk about, you know, those head pieces being those ideal pieces. And I understand why. With that head piece, you saw that. I'll put it back on the screen here. Um, I've got him hooked through the bottom and then back out the head. That. That head, it cannot spin up and foul up the gap of the hook. Those body pieces, you flip those, you know, hook those right through the back, it can just spin around there. And so it doesn't take much. I mean, it, it, on, the, on the drop, it can spin. A fish hits it, they can spin it up, and before they're able to engage that hook point in their mouth, they can get the bait between that, and, and then that may explain a lot of the missed hookups. So um, I definitely like those head pieces better. Um, and would love to find a way, and in fact, I may experiment here. Why not? A couple different ways to hook up uh, these body pieces um, to where it can't rotate. See how that can just rotate around? It's just, there's nothing stopping it. And then it could end up like that, and it gets down there, and that's what you're fishing with, and there's no hook point, right? Hook point is now in the bait. So, you know, I'm going to try this as long as I get it up here. Take it through the side here. And come up. Can that come up as easy? Yeah, let's... How about that? I like that. That's a little bit better. You know, it's it's not as it can't spin as much. So we'll try that. I think I got it just hooked just as well. There's plenty of hook point exposed. Again, could be a reason why I've had a lot of missed hookups. Maybe I just getting the gap fouled up. We'll just keep experimenting. I do have some tilapia in here. In fact, the next line that comes in unhooked, I might put a, a tilapia head on there. Um, which, by the way, being in Texas, if you're going to fish with tilapia um, that you catch, either in a, in a cast net or with rod and reel, uh, those are considered invasive species in the state of Texas. Um, and if you are caught with one of those um, that has not been beheaded or gutted, then uh, you're looking at a citation. So 
if you catch those in a cast net, you're thinking, oh, this is great. I'll, um, I'll take these home and eat them or I'll, I'll fish with them. Cut the head off immediately. Because um, the game warden pulls up and you've got that in your cooler, um, you know, it's just going to be at his discretion. I mean, definitely if you put them in your live well, you're getting a ticket. Um, if you've got them on ice in a cooler, again, it's going to be it's going to be that game warden's discretion as to what your intent was. But the bottom line is they don't want people catching those, putting them in a live well, keeping them alive, and then uh, for whatever reason dumping them in some creek or ditch somewhere that feeds into another body of water, and then they've infected that lake as well. Um, so. Just keep that in mind if you want to use tilapia for bait. Uh, get those heads cut off immediately. That's, that's the easiest thing to do. There's a good takedown. That looks like, okay, that looks like he's got it. And that does look like one of those little channels. Again, just them running, you know. Blues like to go down and roll. And I said that, and... I've caught a blue cat, and I want you to look at this hookup. You want to talk about poor hookups. That hook is not in his mouth. It has snagged him on the side of the mouth. Wow. A little blue, but it is a blue. Listen to him talk. Okay, but that, was, that wasn't a hook set. That was a hook snag. So we'll call you my lucky number three. There. I actually saw a, a boil of his tail. Yeah, that's a good fish. And that's a blue. And that is an excellent hook set right in the corner of his mouth. Five aught hook. Switching hands with it. That smaller bait, I mean, I know it's just one fish, but that smaller bait produced. It's a nice fish. That might be the nicest one of the day. Let's put him on the board. I could call him 18 and 3 quarters. He's not wanting to lay still for me. Come here. Come here. You're making a mess out of me, though. It's definitely the best blue. Pretty fish. Look at that. Look at his coloration. He's talking to us. All right, buddy. Hope you've got friends. And another one. Again, I didn't even have time to get my phone put down and get this camera on. I don't think he hooked himself up, though. Hadn't given up on it. Definitely playing with it. You see the line at an angle. It's so weird that it's this rod. I mean, I'm not getting any action on this side of the boat. It's the same bait. It's roughly the same depth. It can't be more than six inches difference. It's hard to tell when I'm sitting here in the kayak, not moving, and with the, these waves kind of taking me up and down and side to side. You know, I don't get true fish arcs. I'm tempted to fix up, pick up on this because that line has just been at an angle. And so it could, it could very well just be that a fish has got himself hooked, but he's just not real big. I'm going to go ahead and pick up on him for better or for worse. Yeah. That, that's what it was. He's hooked. Actually, I've got another fish hitting on this other rod over here. So this guy was hooked. That's another little blue. Or another blue. It's a little blue. Yeah, but he was hooked, but once he got himself hooked, he couldn't do anything. This rod over here is going nuts the same way, so get that out. Tore that bait up. 
little tiny guy, maybe 12 inches. But this rod over here in the background of this fish is at an angle too. So let me give that a look. See? So that's my hesitation sometimes. You know, I get those big takedowns, and it's like that's all they got, and then they're hooked, and they just kind of swim around, and I, I'm afraid to pick up on them. And here's, and this is another one. Now this is a decent fish. I'll tell you what, though, somebody, somebody's done a number on him. that out. Good fish. Look at his back. I don't know if you can see that. Let me change him without him killing me here. Look at his back right there. Somebody's got a hold of him. I don't know if that is. I don't know what that is, to be honest with you. Whatever it is, he's going to go back down there and figure it out. But that's pretty fresh. It hasn't healed up at all, so no telling. Maybe a gar got a hold of him or something. Turtle. Snapping turtle, maybe. He's got that... He's got the line pegged to the side, so... It's another... Another one of those where I feel like he's got himself hooked, but he's probably not big enough to do much, so I'm going to go ahead and pick up on him. Yep. Yeah. That's really what it is. Just a little blue cat. Set though, good hook set. Keep keep kind of showing that right in the bottom of his mouth. He wasn't going anywhere. All right, so we're starting to see some numbers, um, although not size. But I tell you what, in this kayak, any size of these fish are fun when they take that rod down. It is it is fun fishing. I'd love to catch a, a 30 inch blue cat, um, but I got no problem at all reeling a bunch of these in. This this is fun. hook set, huh? Did you just run into it? Is that what you did? Doof. Alright. Alright, so we're heading into our final 50 minutes, 5-0 minutes. Downsized all my baits. Um, and back left here, uh, closer to the bottom, my two front ones. And there's a good bite as I mention it. Um, the other two here still sitting at about six foot. Really need to catch, catch a fish on this back left rod here. New reel. Got to get a fish in the boat on it and get the bad juju out of it. Get it broken in. was a long wait between fish. This guy got some mud on him. Tells me he's been he's been laying down there in the mud somewhere. It's a good hook set though, little blue cat. He's real dirty. My uh, chest camera here has died so we're gonna be uh, going exclusively with the front camera now. is how you get the bad juju out of that reel. Woo! And that is the smallest hook that I've got on there. And he ate that tiny little head of shad. All right, he's 22 and a quarter. Maybe call it 22, get his nose up against here. Absolutely the best fish of the night. 
great blue cat. Big takedown on this bad rod or back back reel. Um, so it wasn't that that reel had bad juju. It it had big fish juju, and I like that. So that's the best fish I've caught in a while, right there. All right, buddy. And there he goes. Worth the wait. Worth the wait. All right, everybody, I've got 10 minutes left. Um, sun is just getting down near the horizon over there. Probably in that 30 minutes until sunset. Really starting to see a lot of bait fish move in here. A lot of signals. I mean, it's not really translating to action right now, but I just feel like tonight it would be. And of course, you know, whenever you're not on the lake, you feel like the fishing's great. And so, for all I know, it could, it could be a terrible night, but I think it was a good day. You know, it wasn't the kind of action I was looking for or hoping for. Um, that last fish that I caught, which I, I'm hoping is on this video. I'm hoping I'm on this video right now because I'm not even sure that it's running. My camera connection has, has it's not working anymore. It's, you know, normally I can connect with my phone um, to the camera and I can see and it's a little monitor to make sure it's recording, everything's running. It's not connecting right now. Looking at the side of it, it says it's on, so I'm going to pretend it's on. Um, so, uh, but but it was it was a good night overall. That last fish, um, 22 inches, I can't remember what I said, um, but that was a good fish. Huge takedown, got the bad juju out of this back uh, reel here, so now both of my new reels have caught fish, and um, that's it. I don't think you can ask for a whole lot more than that coming out here. Uh, on an evening and catching whatever I caught, seven, eight fish, um, you know, one of them up there, uh, a little over uh, 20, and the other, I, I think the first one I caught was uh, just under 20. So that's all I've got for everybody. Um, have a great night, and we will uh, we'll see you again soon.